and we're broadcasting. So, hello everyone, whether you're watching this live or archived, because this is going to be archived on YouTube later. Um, yes, so we're just going to get straight into trains then. Now, did that transition work? Yes, it did. Good. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, let's see, who's in chat? Uh, oh, there's someone new. Um, gamers X. Uh, how do you say that? Gamers X Sakus Boy 99 and Mr. W. Also, two people who I think are bots. Probably are. Uh, yes, I hope I pronounced it right. But hello, welcome. Uh, yes. Um, hi, Slovak. Oh, it didn't say that you're in the chat. Oh, now it does. <laughs> right. Um, so, hello. Um, and yes. Hi, Mr. W. To you as well. Right. So, last time. Um, we mostly did work in this area. So, I put down this little area around here with this warehouse and what's going on here. We put down some more things in the gravel pit. And we also made this little car park with the many um, sleepers and also some outhouses over here over yes over here um, how can you tell if there is a bot watching well uh, I can't really but in the uh, users in chat view uh, another TTV viewer and Lurksex, um at the beginning I thought they were actual people watching but then it was brought to my attention uh, or it came to my attention that they are in a lot of streams, they never type anything, and uh, then I saw on their Twitch page that they are in a lot of streams, and they're never, and, but they're never watching, and that sort of thing, and you can type in a specific thing into the text box, which means that they will no longer watch the stream, which I haven't done, because I don't really want to deal with that. So I think that those two are probably bots, um, although I cannot be completely sure. But they've never typed anything in chat, and yeah. Right, so what's the next thing to do? Uh, right, so we've done that area, that area. Okay, I think I'll do this area here next, where the gravel uh, transfer area is going to be. So basically trucks are going to dump the gravel here, and then it's going to be loaded into the trains via this crane. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, Lurksex and TTV viewer, another TTV viewer are bots. Yeah. Hmm. Although for the first however many streams, I actually thought that they were real viewers, uh, and it does feel <clears throat> it does feel a little uh, mean to do that in a way, especially for uh, new channels who are only starting to stream, and they think, oh. There are people watching them. Somebody found that. Oh, this is a great start. And then uh, people talk to them and everything. And then uh, they never respond. And then it turns out, oh, they were never watching. It was all a lie. I have them too. Yes, I've actually noticed them in your streams too. Right. Charming. Also, hi, hi, gamers. For some reason, your name doesn't show up if I typed the at in the chat. Hmm. Or maybe people who aren't logged in. Uh, yes, that could easily be. Because it does say we have five viewers at the moment. And uh, there are definitely... Well, there are only three people. So gamers, Mr. W and Slovak in chat that I can currently see. Um, who I think are real people. Uh, yeah. But if you're not, not going to count, welcome as well. Um, yes, everybody's welcome here. Um... Just tested the the small BB40 bus. It's cute and agile bus. Oh, I see. Good. I don't know Twitch, but why, how would they show up in chat if they aren't logged in? Um, I don't think they would. I don't think they would show up in chat. I guess it sees the IP address. Are you sure about that, uh, Slovak? Because as far as I know, if you're not logged in, it doesn't show that you're there. <clears throat> it just... It, I think it doesn't. I'm not sure at all. 
uh, yeah, probably, um, yeah, because I, I think that, yeah, I think that it does only show you if you are logged in. Well, as far as I know. They don't count as viewers, they don't do anything. Yes, I mean, maybe they're just listening or maybe copy, copying the chat, like if everything people type, maybe they're compiling a database of, of everything that is said on stream or that's typed in chat. But they are here. Yeah. Also, if I do miss your message, please do get in touch uh, and write, type it in chat. So, because I don't want to miss messages, but sometimes uh, I do. So, yeah, if I do, please type it in chat. Um, also, sorry again, I missed the last two streams as a whole as I was on holidays. How did they go? Especially the first Roller Coaster Tycoon stream. Go. Ah, well. Uh, the last, okay, well, let's do the last trains stream first. The last trains stream, actually, it did go well. Uh, there were quite a few shenanigans. It was quite silly. Um, I mean, you can look it up uh, on YouTube, the, the archive, or on Twitch, uh, because it's still there at the moment. Um, but yes, as I said before, we basically just did a whole lot of detailing work. Uh, and there was, yeah. And we've got this little car that's still waiting for its owner, but it's still got some company here. Uh, also, we've got a, oh, what was his name? Something... McMindface, oh, what was it? Let's see if I can think about it. Uh, I don't know, I'll look. Oh, Michael, of course. Michael McMindface, the foreman we've got. Um, surveying the work that's being done. And, yeah, we've got, we basically did the, a whole lot of detailing. There were a lot of shenanigans. It was uh, quite good. And as for the first roller coaster stream, that went really well as well. Um, that one's only one hour. Um, one second, just trying to figure. Okay, oh, right, right, the, the gravel thing. Right, so the roller coaster stream is only one hour, uh, but it did go. It was enough last time, but last time uh, it was only Slovak in the chat for a little while because he was still streaming at that point. Um, actually, I need to uh, check to see what the color of the ballast is if I load it in so that I match that for when it's been loaded. Uh, so I'll need to do a test for where people are actually typing in chat um, to be able to estimate whether one hour is enough or not. But it did go really well. Um, we It was a good start. Um, oh god, it's a sci-fi show in real life. <laughs> um, I don't really know what that was referencing. Uh, I will... Oh, you mean the, the bots? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of sci-fi is actually based on real-life things that are happening, uh, or the way things are going. Um, 1984, not uh, the least of them, of which. I will be able to build Central Europe pretty soon again. You probably saw the pictures Prisoner posted. Very soon it will be my turn to work on CE for a few months straight. Oh, I see. Uh, so you've got to do some... Uh, you have to prepare your mind, body, and soul for that then, right? Get everything straightened out and work. Right? Okay, let's see. Uh, well, let's just put this one down, just as an ex Oh, well, no. I'll put down one that is a bit larger, uh, this one, pr probably. Yeah, the bots. How are you enjoying the RC sto story mode? Isn't it the first time you played an RC story mode? Uh, well, first it's um, career mode. And yes, it's the first time I've played. Well, I did play one scenario a few, uh, like a week ago or so to test to see if it worked um, for streaming. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's really nice. Uh, to do things. It's also a lot of fun. We put, we, okay, here's the thing that might not make sense if you don't know Roller Coaster Tycoon. Uh, by the way, it's Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, um, right, which was released in 2004. Uh, we used the Roller Coaster Editor, so where you make your own coasters, that editor, to make a mini golf course. <laughs> All right, so what's it called? Uh, VX, no, ra this one, ra no, not Grain. Oh, down here, gravel. This one's the one. Because I want to see what color this is, uh, so that I can make the terrain text just the same color. Oh, it's just basically white. <coughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, I need to work on CE and I need to work on the narrow gauge route. Two projects again, haha. <laughs> University will mix into it soon as well, which will slow me down again. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, um, best of luck with that, if you believe in luck. Or I guess it means that I hope that uh, fortunate events will happen, even though luck as a concept may not be exactly what I believe in, but the shorthand for that is good luck, so that's what I'm saying. Right, so now we need to, I need to find a texture that sort of is similar to that one. I mean, this one's not too dissimilar. Um, but I'll just look through these um, a little bit. Uh, nope. Hmm. No, not now. I mean, this one maybe it's a mm, it's a bit dusty as well. It's not really what I want at the moment. Did I already test this one? Oh yes, I did. Uh, let's see here. Good luck with you, niece, lover giggle. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is the perfect texture, isn't it? And by the way, that's at the smallest size uh, scale. If I turn it all the way up, it's at this scale. <laughs> uh, this one kind of looks similar. I think that one's um, the best one so far. Actually, what's that called? Um, Gravel Cobble 2, it was. Let's see. Alright, I, I think I'm going to go with, the, with this one. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, where is it? this one, Gravel Cobble 2, and uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to put in the mound like I want it. Uh, thanks! Uh, or rather, th thanks! Clashes with the uh, debris in the train cars, I think. Um, well, the thing is, the gravel in the, in the train cars uses its own texture. I, I can't determine which texture it uses. So that load has that texture, and I'm I'm just at this point just trying to pick one that has vaguely the same hue. Um, sometimes you do have to make compromises in that like trends. Although that being said, I could probably um, make my own texture and then import that into trains, but that's a lot of effort to go to. Like I'd have to go actually go outside and. <laughs> That's not where I'm going to end the sentence. Um, I would actually have to go outside, find a bit of gravel that looks like that, and then take a photo of that, um, edit it so that it's seamless, then import it into trains, just to use it here. Uh, so uh, no, I'm just going to pick one that's from the color of the ballast, roughly the same, and I don't want to use the color here because I want it to uh, be um, to contrast with it, so it's clear that that is where the things that are being loaded are. Um, although maybe I could mix in a different texture as well. Nope. No, that one's too yellow. I mean, from a color, this texture would fit better, but it's such a low resolution. It wouldn't. It doesn't really work. I mean, unless there's two thousand and four trains, in which case, sure, of course, that'll work. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Oh, I remember these old textures. Wow. It's been a while 
since I've seen these. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I think that this is the, the gravel texture we have at the moment is probably the best one we're gonna get. Mm. I mean, maybe I can mix in uh, like this texture perhaps. You going through all these textures brings nostalgia. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. Uh, for me as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to mix in this texture a little, I think. Although then it looks kind of blurry because the textures are kind of mixed together. I think that this is probably the best we're going to get at this point. So I'm just going to leave it <clears throat> like this. Uh, all right. I am, however, going to move uh, this truck a bit closer. So kind of over here, like it's just come up from the mine and it's now just unloading some uh, gravel. Right. Okay, now should there be... I'm... Mm, I think that this can be left open because this is uh, an industrial area only. I don't think I need to put a fence in here. Uh, yeah, and this is not the main line anyways. Right, so what else could go in here? What else? I think maybe we could have some more uh, some more of that little of that gravel, like a, a few more mounds over here, just where it's being um, stored temporarily until it's loaded into a train. Right. Because I do want this um, to feel like quite a productive industry because I want heavy gravel trains to come out of this place and if there is only a very small um, mound of gravel that's here it kind of feels like a bit unrealistic if a large train um, can be fully loaded here although maybe I'll split it up later mm, a little bit higher here um, yeah, Nostalgia Bomb has gone off. Also, a, th uh, a thing about graphics. I've got the Sega Mega Drive collection on PS3. The gameplay graphics are, of course, all pixelated, but the cutscene and purely visual graphics, such as title screens, aren't that bad, particularly for Sonic, for Sonic fl uh, Flick Flicky's Island 3D. Mm, yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's definitely true, because cutscenes back then, they had a lot, obviously they had the uh, offline processing power to render all of that, so they could spend a couple of hours to render one simple scene and then put it in the game, um, because that's uh, a lot easier to do than if you're doing it runtime, so while the game is being played. Um, Although, to be fair, uh, I think that actually for a lot of games, for a lot of older games, the cutscenes are what looks like the, the worst part of it from the graphics point of view. Sure, they're more high poly, the shaders are a bit more realistic, but in a lot of um, kind of that PS2 uh, era of games, <coughs> sorry, uh, one second. In, um, yeah, in that PS2 era of games, Actually, I will put in a fence on this side, just because uh, there's maybe a bit more traffic going down there. Um, yes, but in that era, uh, the um, offline graphics technology, so for cutscenes and things like that, was good enough so that it looks kind of realistic, but it wasn't good enough to actually look realistic. So you're kind of in that uncanny valley, whereas in a lot of the uh, the actual in-game graphics, uh, it's fine because it's clearly not that realistic in most games. It's clearly that there are a lot of polygon, well, not that many polygons, um, and the animations aren't that good. It, it's clear that it's a video game, it's um, artificial graphics, uh, but for the 
For the cutscenes, they were just a bit better, but not good enough to actually look realistic in a lot of cases. And I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think in a lot of those, in a lot of the games from that kind of era. Uh, video game nerd mode activate! <laughs> and the person who designed the art for the Echo, the Dolphin games, both of them, is a prominent fantasy artist, Boris Valle Vallejo? 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 The exclamation mark was meant to be after activate. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thanks for saying that it makes sense now. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, right. Um, also, um, if you like uh, sort of Essay, video essays on video games and themes in them and different techniques in what they're doing and what they're doing and like architecture in them and feelings about different things and things like that I would suggest uh, checking out um, Jacob Geller on YouTube he's got some really good videos uh, especially on architecture I find also one about haunted houses so what do you want to do in this bit <coughs> I think maybe just put in some empty trucks here. Mm. Well, actually, we could have like maybe uh, some trucks meeting. <laughs> actually, we could have. Uh, okay, an interesting thing might be if we had like. Uh, actually, no, not this way. If we had some. Oops, just cancel that. Why is it doing that? Is it lag? That's might be why. So may, what a thing we could have is we could have like full trucks coming this way hmm <laughs> and then we could have some empty trucks going along the other side <laughs> so it's kind of like a, 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 a roundabout in a way so kind of like this <laughs> what do you think of that um so what does he do? Analyze and review architecture? I like this. Uh, well, thanks, Lovick. Uh, not, not in that way. Um, he analyzes video games like he analyzes video games like their art. For example, um, for example, in some in some of his videos, the architecture, like, uh, mm, well, one second. Uh, yeah, like in, in one of them. Um, the art, it's about the architecture of the video game control, I think it's control, and the kind of the way the concrete shapes are kind of almost growing, um, and it's like a haunted house basically, and that sort of thing, and uh, what different kinds of architecture can give you, the different emotions they can give you, it actually it's really interesting to watch, I suggest you go look at some of his things. Um, oh okay, sounds really interesting. Was it Jacob Galaxies? Uh, no, Jacob Geller. Um, one second, I'll, I can put the link in the chat. <clears throat> there we go, that's the link. Right, so what do we need here, what do we need here? Well, we obviously need grass, but that's going to be put in a bit later. Uh, so, let's see, let's see. I think this is fine. It should be a bit sparse, because it is, after all, a storage area for this. I need to get a move on the narrow gauge. I know I said that I gave up on American routes after Eagle County, but I really want to make a half-desert, half-mountain forest uh, narrow gauge using the... DR, um, DRGW steamers. Oh yes, that would be so nice if someone made that. I did also start something like that, um, not narrow gauge, um, a little while ago. Also, what do I need to work on? Right, I think I need to put like a little shed or thing like here, maybe an office. Uh, actually, yes, yeah, so that's what I can do. Um, but I didn't get very far on that. Uh, so yeah, that would be amazing if you could actually do that. Um, Especially because your roots look so nice. It would be really good to have you make that route. Um, making a note of it as we type. Alright. Alright. Good. So, 
yeah, we can. I can. I'll put this little office here. Yes, it's a bit. It's a floating just a little bit. I need to put it down just a bit more. Just like that, sort of. Thanks, very nice. No problem. Um, yeah, after all, what I said is true. So, yeah. Uh, okay, that's good. I think we might need another one here. Also, I realize I, um, when I read this last time, last time, I said accidents, accident forms must be filled in, and I always read this as incident. I don't know why. Probably because of the um, exposure on this bit. I, I thought that the text was too brightly exposed that you couldn't read it properly. So I thought it was incident for some reason. Uh, but it's actually also accident. And the things I read that multiple times, and I did r actually read it multiple times, and every time I read that word as incident, even though up here I read it as accident. Probably because of the exposure. But yeah, that's the thing I noticed. Um, right. Your route looks good and amazing so far as well. Thanks. And you got the mind for detail. <laughs> uh, yes, but sometimes I do tend to put in too much detail, and then it starts to lag, and then, yeah, it stops being that much fun. Right, uh, what's next? Right, the little warehouse thing. Uh, not warehouse. Um, uh, I want. Yeah, well, yes, warehouse kind of. <clears throat> or shed, maybe. Um, uh, let's see. Alright, that's the, <laughs> the test one. Um, I think maybe if I type in mine, actually, we might find some good assets here. Uh, we are building a mine, but it didn't actually search for mine assets, which I know would have been logical, I think. And yeah, things like that. Like, they, uh, actually, is this the one I used back there? I think that's the one I used over there. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the physics or collision engine like in trains? I remember watching one of your streams and you were testing a train on a route, and it was just coming to the end of what you had created and was coming close to the endless void. What would have happened if you had allowed the train to keep going, for example? Well, in Trains A New Era and Trains uh, Terrorist 19, which this is, uh, there are no crash physics. The train basically, if, it, if a train crashes, it basically just stops on the spot uh, with a little X rotating above it, indicating that it's crashed. Um, and it doesn't have any sort of physics to it. Like other trains can just drive through it uh, without issue. Um, yeah. Uh, but in previous versions of trains, uh, the trains that derailed would actually skid across the, the ground. And um, uh, yeah, they still couldn't collide with each other, but at least they could collide with the ground, but they don't anymore. Mind for details, as Sharadice's friend in real life, I think I'm justified in calling this the understatement of the year. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's nice of you to say. Thanks. Right, so I think this fits quite well here. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of like that. It just adds a bit more to this area here. Not really sure what it's for, some sort of boiler, I think. But I can leave it here. Also, I agree with Slovak. The route is really coming along so well. Yeah, thanks. Nice of you to say. Right. Um, let's see. We don't need a coal mine here. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that this is probably a <laughs> different kind of asset. Not really that suited for this. Mm, let's see, mineshaft, um, maybe some of this, looks like a sandcastle, <laughs> it does, it does kind of, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, mm, I'm not sure if I should place anything else in here, maybe one of these buildings, like over here, not really sure what it would be used for here, hmm, no, I think I'll place it on the other side of the road, so kind of like over here. Alright, we've got those ones. 
Also, I'll save. All right, let's see. Mine tipples. Nope. Mineral pallets. No. Oh, we've got these miners' houses. Ah, uh, yes, these are. Um, because when a mine was put up somewhere, often what happened was that the, well, it's still the case today, uh, that the company who owns the mine builds an entire town close by for the workers to live at, so that they don't have a commute to get to work. Um, and oftentimes the houses look very uniform, very uh, same, like shanty towns almost. Um, but these are actually quite good, and I might use them in the town over here, which is still not got a name at the moment. So I will actually just place one of these down here so I don't forget to use them. Uh, so what other games do you play in your free time away from the streams, Um, <coughs> Well, I do, some I do sometimes uh, play... <coughs> no, my voice just cracked. It is a frog in my throat. I don't want to um, cough as much. Uh, but maybe that would be the better option to just clear it and then be done with it. <coughs> yeah, um, I'm just going to just going to continue as normal at the moment. Uh, yeah, so I do sometimes play uh, Train Simulator uh, when I just want to drive around. Uh, but that is the thing with that is that because I'm using Mac, um, it is kind of a hassle to start up in the first place because Train Simulator is a Windows game, so it'd have to start up Parallels, which can take like 10 minutes to start, and then another couple minutes inside in Parallels for it to boot up properly, and then I can start running it. Um, but I do play that sometimes. Also, I really, really like Transport Fever, but again, I don't have Transport Fever 2 yet, but it's supposed to come out for Mac in October. Um, so that's... Another thing, also City Skylines, but I haven't played that for quite a while. Because with that was, when I first got it, I played it for a long time. Uh, and then I was kind of burned out on it, and I haven't really gotten into it since that much. Although I do want to play that again at some point. Um, but other than that, I really don't play that many games at the moment. Because uh, I've... I, the thing is... What I really, really enjoy are creative things, um, and to, because because I've um, I've got quite um, a bit of experience in Unity and game development, that's kind of become a game for me as well. Like if I have a new idea for a project and I think, oh, I could do this thing, like I could make the player jump from wall to wall. Uh, uh, and then use the normal of the face that they land on for the angle at which to place them and things like that, then it's, it kind of like becomes a game for me to then make that project in Unity, that game. Uh, and I really, really enjoy that. Plus, that also has the benefit that you get some sort of return from that. Like, uh, if you put those games up for sale, if they're good enough and you actually finish them, then... <coughs> um, uh, yeah, you get something, you get a return on that, like a money, a monetary return. Uh, so yeah. Um, your throat has been a bit iffy recently, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why, it never used to be that way. Um, uh, maybe it's the fact that I get to bed quite late recently, and then I wake up quite late, and then maybe that's part of the issue. Um, but yeah, it, it, it starts when I'm kind of talking. Um, <clears throat> It's kind of, um, yeah, it's not too bothersome. It, I just feel like um, I have to uh, cough sometimes. But yeah, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and it's really only when I start talking for quite a while. Uh, anyway, um, I know exactly what you mean. I adore to create. Yes, me too. Yeah, I've been having a long lines during lockdown. Mm, yep. Okay, so I, I'm thinking that maybe we could have kind of this old building over here, like maybe the, the mine was over here at some point, like a long time ago, and we can have kind of this covered in trees. But if that's the case, 
I'm actually going to place it closer by first because when I put down the forest, um, I don't want to replace it. Well, I could. Well, no, I can put the copy paste tool on add rather than replace and then put it down like that. So I think that that's kind of okay for that area. So now, uh, let's see. Right. I'm. I think I'm just going to put down these little warehouses with like a little parking lot going down here. And then we'll see uh, how done we are with that with this project at the moment. Actually, does this one have an open door? Oh, it does. Oh, you can maybe place some Easter eggs in there. Actually, is that floating? Did I make that? I think I made that floating accidentally. No, it is legitimately got a default height of, what is it? Like one and a half meters? Don't know why. Uh, favorite Easter egg in a game? <clears throat> uh, I think so far, probably the thing in trains where they've got the fly camera in the newspaper. I think that that's, because that's a useful thing, a, a useful feature, they've put an Easter egg in. But yeah, you've, you've also got always the, uh, like, um, pop culture easter eggs, like maybe Back to the Future, or things like that. Also, that, speaking of Back to the Future, I actually um, put this little easter egg in. Now, it's not the Time Machine version, it's just a normal DeLorean, but yeah, hiding behind some billboards. And I do realize I said baseboards, uh, I called them baseboards last time. What I meant to say was billboards. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, um, that's an Easter egg I like. What's your favorite Easter egg, uh, egg in a game, Mr. W? And I guess anybody else who's watching. Oh, actually, I do need to check if Swedar is watching because last time he did kind of sneak into the stream a bit. Uh, so just want to make sure I uh, want to look. But the thing is, the chat, the thing users in chat isn't that accurate a lot of the times. So I don't see him in there. But if you you are watching, Mr. Swedar, make yourself known at once. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a Back to the Future Easter egg in Driver San Francisco. Any chance you could show the train's Easter egg if it's in this one? Uh, I can try. I'm not sure if I'll have any luck, because it kind of de uh, depends on which character spawns uh, the platform. But I can have a look, uh, see if it spawns. Also, one other thing, uh, I don't know if it's made by a, mo if it's a mod or something like that, but with the, I think also Doctor Who spawns in the game uh, as a passenger sometimes. Actually, I need I do need to load a different, I can, well, I can quickly load it. <coughs> right. Uh, I can quickly load a different a different route. Which one has? Ah, uh, this one has passengers. Um, Driver San Francisco. Oh, I love that game. I never found that Easter egg though. What was it? I have no idea. Uh, Back to the Future. I think he said right. So I do have a, an idea, but I don't. I haven't played it. Um, I'll just quickly see if I can show you the Easter egg. So yeah, basically I'm just loading a route where I've got stations with quite a few people on them so that the chance of the easter egg spawning is a bit higher. Right, let's see. Where is a station that's not going to be too laggy? Um, no. Maybe down here. Uh, no, there's just one uh, passenger waiting there. <clears throat> um, no, she's reading a book. Uh, but actually, is that an Easter egg as well? Actually, I actually need to turn off the thing in the details. I'll just turn quickly turn post processing down to low to turn the blur off. No, that I can't read that. 
Um, let's see if it spawns anywhere. Might be passengers sitting in wagons, though, now that I think about it. Uh, that's the Easter egg where it spawns. Mm. Actually, actually, what I can do is I can just increase the number of passengers here at the moment. Oh, no, to edit the root layer. I won't save this at the moment anyways. As you know that I uh, unlock the sessions layer. Never mind then. Oh, it might be on temp locked. Why won't it edit the... Oh, there we go. Uh, initial passengers... Oh, that's too many. How about 500? Will that put 500 passengers? Nobody will put a lot of them on. Mm. Uh, I think it might be people who are waiting in... Uh, or is it this one? Might be this one. Uh, th that's a bit laggy. Uh, not laggy. Uh, low quality. I'm not sure if that is... Ba I'm not sure if this is the exact one. But basically it was a passenger like that where on the text it said to press Alt U or Alt Y to enter fly mode. Um, but yeah, that's the easter egg. Uh, Alright. My favorite one is is one that when I looked it up, I couldn't find anything on it. It's a need for speed, most wanted. A uh, piece of graffiti on a wall. It's a face with infamous write written about uh, with infamous written ab above it, and a split head below it. Half is a normal human. The other looks more rageful and fiery, referring to the good or evil pathways in the first infamous game. Oh, I see. Silver Eagle, I've not done it myself, but I've seen it done in a video. To do a jump at 88 miles an hour, look it up. I've probably got it wrong. I uh, don't know about that. Um, okay, I will look it up. I won't tell you what happens, but the achievement is called Blast from the Past. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the other one. Mm, not sure if I can find that at the moment. The other one was that I think Doctor Who spawns as, as passenger sometimes. I saw him here one time. Actually, I think I might have a screenshot of that. So I'll quickly go to the ready screen and see if I can find a screenshot. Uh, where is it? There we go. Um. I'll see if I can find a reference picture. One second. You can just enjoy the seagulls in the background. <laughs> um. One second, we just find the right one. Right, <clears throat> here we go. So, um, just you find the right picture. Be with you in a second. Uh, oh, one second, where is it? Um, I did, I remember, I did have a really good reference picture for that. I don't know if I can find it at the moment. Uh, whereas I, I, the thing is, I, I don't want to miss, I don't want to use a wrong reference picture. If there's a much better one. I think I'll just use this one. And I, I am aware that you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> because you can't see the screen. Um, or I guess that one. Yeah, that one's fine. Sure, why not this one? So here we go. Um, just switch it over. So this, uh, the fourth doctor. So this one. Uh, if you look here, just the um, with the uh, coat and the hat and the scarf. Yeah, like this. See that? Um, also, yeah, with the trousers, the scarf hanging around with the hat. And then, I took a screenshot of this in trains. 
Here, look at that. I can even make it full screen. Uh, no, I can't because it's. I need to actually change the size of it. Uh, one second. There we go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I mean, that has got to be an Easter egg, right? The Doctor Who can spawn as a passenger. <laughs> uh, oh wow, that's nice. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it is. It is really nice. And actually, um, I found this on this very platform. Hmm? I took that screenshot like right here of him reading the sign or... Yeah, I think it was that sign. I hadn't put the billion there yet. You're presumably talking about Shiredice's one. Mm, don't know about that. Don't... Absolutely do not know if he's talking about that. But probably yes. Right, so now back to root building. Okay, I need to put on the filter again. And I need to change to the root layer. I just decided to check my platforms. I found him too. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know, I never noticed that before. It, it's only like a couple of months ago that I first noticed that. Right, uh, here we go. I actually got two of them. I mean, it's timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly, yeah, I mean, that's okay if you're talking about Doctor Who. <laughs> um, oh right, thanks. Uh, what's the time traveler speed for the DeLorean? Uh, 88 miles an hour, yes. Uh, when the DeLorean goes 88 miles an hour, they travel back in time. Which if you look at uh, Back to the Future 3, where the engine is supposed to push the locomotive at 88 miles an hour, and it's a really tense scene. In the film it works, but if you actually look at the speed that the locomotive's traveling at, I'd say it's traveling probably only about, maybe, m at the most, 30 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, in the film it works because of the music and it's tense and things like that, yeah. Um, uh, right, where did I read? Uh, you missed one of mine, that's... The speed, right? Uh, three. Wow. Travel. Do you think they're from three alternative futures? Um, I th well, it's a bit difficult to to tell with the Doctor. I think they're probably from. Hmm. Maybe they're from the same future, but they've just been um, multiplied through the time travel. So they're from the same future, but they are, well, one of them's, well, okay, here's, the, here's what happened. They traveled um, into the past, but something went wrong with the TARDIS, and when the TARDIS materialized, it materialized three times. So they got out of the TARDIS and found that there were three of them. And that's basically what happened, I think. There's a Back to the Future point and click game. Oh, yes, you mean the Telltale one. I actually played those. Those are really good. A lot of fun. Uh, yes. It's possible, but not confirmed. Uh, what do you mean? I just sent a screenshot of all three of them waiting to your server. <laughs> Thanks, I'll um, check that out a bit later. If you want to check it out right now, Go to the disc, the Shardice Discord server. There's a link uh, in the, on the YouTube page in the videos. You can go there and then look at what he sent to my server. The three doctors, yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> right? So, is Discord the only social media you use, Shared Eyes? Uh, well, the thing is, um, I don't use any social media uh, personally, uh, but Shared Eyes is the name of the partnership, so my parents' partnership, which I'm a partner of as well. Um, so I kind of manage Sharadice's, uh, what's the word, um, public relations is probably the best way of putting it. 
So uh, yes, um, uh, I think Shard yeah, Shardice also has an old Twitter account, but that's not used at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, I did also try to create a, f a Facebook account for Shardice for the partnership, and it worked. I, I had to create a personal account first, then I created a business page, but I didn't, uh, when I tried to, um, when I tried to uh, join one of the uh, uh, Facebook groups, the trains Facebook groups, um, it, uh, it joined as my personal account. So then I wrote, uh, so I did hours of research on how I can change to it using my business page because the button that it said to use in all the tutorials was no longer there and there was no way, uh, no replacement for it. So then I ended up asking in the forum, I think, uh, only to find out like uh, the next day that my entire account had been uh, disabled um, for either violating the community guidelines or I think uh, some other reason. They didn't say what it was that it did. They didn't give a warning. They didn't do anything like that. Just account gone. I uh, I then clicked the the button for it to for them to review the thing because I legitimately didn't know what I had done wrong supposedly. Uh, only for um, some time later uh, for it to say uh, they've uh, reviewed it and it cannot be undone in this case. Uh, yeah, still not even telling me what it was that I'd done wrong. Uh, so yeah, uh, don't think that Shardice is gonna get onto Facebook anytime soon. Uh, and the, the thing is that that kind of thing is exactly what I had imagined dealing with <laughs> social media platforms would be like. The, it, the, the, the first thing that happened was exactly that, which I know it sounds like um, it's a bit funny for uh, now, but it really wasn't. It was really quite annoying. Um, who? Uh, Brown? Frankenstein? Lol. Uh, not sure what that's referencing. So who is the actual manager of Shardice? <laughs> is it like a company? Uh, yeah, it's a partnership. Um, so it's both my parents and me. Um, after I turned 18. So yes, we're so th a partnership between the three of us. Um, nerd effect, nerd effect here. Frankenstein is the name of the doctor, not the monster. It's never given a name. Yes, that's true. Or if you watch Mel Brooks's, I think it's Mel Brooks's uh, uh, parody of it, of it, or maybe it's not Mel Brooks. I think it is Mel Brooks though. Um, uh, with Gene Wilder in it. Uh, he actually says, always says it's pronounced Frankenstein because he doesn't want to be associated with <laughs> the work of Frankenstein. But yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I know. It's quite interesting. Not many people catch on to it. Charming. Yeah. Um, mm. All right. So I think that's okay for now, though I do want to place some crates and other details in there, just so that it doesn't look as empty. Right, oh, actually I've got an idea, an Easter egg. Uh, this is actually the first asset that I put into trains. I made it myself. I modeled it in Blender. Um, I made the texture in Blender as well. It's got full uh, PBR texture, so it's physically rendered. You've got the normal map. Actually, I need to put up the um, post processing again. Right, much better. Right, so it's got the roughness map, normal map, all the all those sort of things. Uh, I know it looks a bit like a dinosaur's neck, but it's really not supposed to. In fact, this is the front here, and that goes over to the side. And I've even put in loading. So if I uh, scroll away, not sure if you'll be able to see on screen on stream, but you can see now it's just a cube with a thing going outside. It's got far fewer polygons, but if I zoom in a bit, you can see it switches to the, the more detailed um, uh, model, so that that's just so for performance. 
Um, <laughs> I've actually uploaded it to the DLS as well. Uh, right, so I think that that's an Easter egg I can put, I can put in this. Where it's kind of like the Navigator film with the spaceship that could change its shape. Kind of reminds me of that. Um, <laughs> how about naming it Phone Home? Uh, that might be nice. So now because the thing is, um, <laughs> looks like a duck model where the texture is glitched. <laughs> I didn't realize ducks had that long necks, but yeah, I do get what you mean. So I want to place this in here in such a way that if you look in through the window, you can see it. <laughs> uh, actually, are there like security guard people that I could place outside? Swan then. Oh right, the one before. I was literally just now thinking about this model of yours and placing it somewhere in the lake. Oh really? <laughs> I guess we're probably psychically connected in some way. Although I'm surprised that the stream delay didn't mess things up. Or maybe it did. Maybe that's what it, why it wasn't in sync perfectly. <laughs> Swan then. Yes. Swan then, probably. Is it an ET reference? Yes it is. I had to go do something. Yes, it is an ET reference. Phone home. Like, ET, phone home, phone home. That's a thing. Right. Um, named it Sharadice's Monster. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I, um, I mean that genuinely. I like how it's kind of this myth growing around it. Uh, right, so... Um... Actually, no, that's not. Uh, one second, no. Maybe guard. Sharadice is lock. <laughs> Although lock is just uh, Scottish for a like a, a lake, a certain kind of lake. Uh. <laughs> Sharadice so what Sharadice so <laughs> the dinosaur name. <laughs> Uh, that is nice. That is nice. Uh, I want some kind of armed guards here that, that are kind of guarding the entrance to the warehouse. I think this is one of the rare occasions that I place some, something like that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, Thunderbirds, like those two uh, um, propeller cranes. Yeah, but as I often do, I just join up words that sound good. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfectly valid thing to do. I mean, isn't that how language is created in the first place? Uh, let's see. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe these ones. Oops, it went away too quickly for me to open it up, but I think it worked because it didn't come up with an error. <laughs> uh, yeah, trains, it just comes up with errors on the fly. <laughs> Although, to be honest, that's what it seems like sometimes. Mm. Imagine if I hadn't switched back yet from the... Uh, waiting screen when I showed you the Doctor Who easter egg <laughs> and you were all just too polite to say anything <laughs> um, let's see maybe some of those okay so me and the guys sometimes joke about the train's errors and so far we figured out that N3V had a bug and they turned that bug into a game. <laughs> uh, actually, it would be interesting to see what the actual game they wanted to make originally would have been like if the whole trains thing is a bug. And I am actually going to place these on the root layer because I want these to be here whether it's day or night or whatever. Oh, why won't it? Oh, now it'll move. Uh, 
Actually, I don't want it that close. Um, well, you've done that before. I didn't have an account then, so, and no one in the chat said anything. I was so frustrated that I couldn't do anything about it. Um, ah, right. Uh, wait. When? Oh, that must have been that time when... Yeah, I did actually switch when that happened. Uh, that was when uh, OBS came up with an error and Twitch crashed on the side. We had to restart the stream. I did actually press the button to switch, but OBS didn't... Uh, it didn't do it, probably because it was already noticing that the stream was about to go down. Or something like that. I have no idea exactly what happened with that. Um... Probably what probably what they shown in the graphics showcase for Tane. Oh right, I remember that trailer when they when they showed those amazing graphics with all the particles and dynamic lighting looking so much better. And then, yeah, that's not exactly what we got though. <clears throat> um, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, the Skyrim Giant Club launch glitch, one of the most famous glitches. That was fixed by Bethesda in a patch, but the community complained about it and it was added back in. Oh, I see. See you in a bit, Slovak. Yes. Right, so, kind of like that. And then maybe we can have some, like, yeah, some, like, Land Rovers as well. Just in case. Because that's not conspicuous at all, is it? <laughs> it's I'm kind of picturing this like that. Have, have you ever seen the film Navigator? Um, about the little kid who um, gets lost in the woods and then gets picked up by aliens and then it's eight years later and he then decides to run away with the alien spaceship. Um, it's kind of like that where they have the alien spaceship like under some covers and they put it into a warehouse and it just, if you look in there you can see that thing in there. <laughs> uh, that's a nice easter egg. And if you look here, uh, phone home, just so that it's clear that it's from outer space. Right. Uh, okay, maybe one more different kind of thing, like a lorry. I'm not sure if this is period accurate. Might not be. But still, just kind of having it over here. That's fine, probably. Sounds eerily similar to a few of the encounters I've heard about. Um, by encounters, do you mean things that actually happened to people? And if so, then maybe, yes, that's what uh, the film might have been inspired by. I'm not sure, though. Don't need church bells. Uh, cicadas singing. Nope. Uh, maybe just some <clears throat> uh, dumpsters. Not dumpsters, dumpster. Um, I once heard the Roswell incident. Miss, miss wrote that as the Boswell incident. <laughs> mm. Well, you never know. The only thing you can really take from is the testimony. Yes, and that is the issue with a lot of these um, cases. Uh, that uh, even if there are quite a few eyewitnesses, things there are a lot of factors. Like for example, especially in the fifties, where sci-fi, um, like sci-fi films, or th those things were kind of new. And then people who saw those films were alone out in the night somewhere in the forest, and they maybe had a flashlight, and they saw maybe a barn owl or something like that, and those big red eyes, because they actually reflect the light, and you see those hoots, and it's spreading its wings and attacking you, could be misunderstood as a monster attacking, if you've seen sci-fi films that you're not that the, um, used to from popular culture yet. So it's, there can be mistakes and things like that, but I do, yeah, I am back. Slovak Eagle has returned, and he's been greeted, so hello, yes, um, uh, 
Welcome back. Uh, Shared Eyes, have I told you about Cryptid Wiki? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Um, and I did actually take a look at it. It looks really interesting. Um, might be some good material there for role playing uh, storylines or plot lines. The eagle has re landed. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks, guys. Yes, you're welcome. Right. Please save again. Uh, right, right, what else should we put in there? Also, you missed another one. Throwing this open. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Oh, right, where did I... Where did I miss that? Let's see. Sounds eerily familiar. Incident. Oh, right, just above that. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I should have been more careful with doing this. Uh, thanks for letting me know. Um, <clears throat> uh, one second. I'll answer in a few seconds. I'll just want to make sure that I know what I'm putting in here. I think probably it's just some more crates. Right. So. I think that um, the likelihood that we are the only life in the universe. I mean, if you actually try to fathom the incredible scale of the universe. Like, if you imagine how many stars are in, in our own galaxy, like, um, was like four billion stars in our own galaxy? <laughs> I think that they probably put the, built a li the warehouse a little bit too small if they have to store everything back there, but that's fine. Yeah, like, just how many stars, I mean, c can you either, even fathom four billion of anything? Life imagine, okay, you can see, uh, you can imagine 10, like 10 apples, or, <laughs> that's a classic example, or 10 something, that's not too difficult. Also barrels, I need to place barrels. Uh, right, but then 100, uh, if, you, if you imagine it in one line, like 100 things in line, isn't that easy. Although if you imagine it like it's 10 by 10 square, then yes, it's, you can see, okay, that's 100. 1,000 is a bit more difficult. Then if you go up to 10,000, it's already 10 times that. Then 100,000, then 1 million. 1 million, it's, I mean, it's a number that gets used so much in modern times, like 1 million pounds, phew, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, but actually, 1 million is an absurdly large amount of things, yeah? I mean, I can't even imagine what one million of one thing would look like in one place. But then, you take that, and you don't take it times ten, so t uh, ten million. You don't take it times um, one hundred, one hundred million. You take it times one thousand. So you take that number that previously you, uh, 1,000, that number that you previously were all probably not able to picture, and then you take that times 1 million. So, and that, that unimaginably huge number, unfathomably huge number, one, uh, 1 billion is, just one quarter of the amount of stars that are estimated to be in our galaxy. Yeah, and then if you imagine that each one of those stars, or most of those stars, has planets. And then if you imagine that if life just evolved through chance, how many chances you would have for life to evolve, given that the universe is billions of years, or like 14 billion years, something like that, and then, if you imagine through all, throughout all of that time, how, that multiplied by the amount of stars, to me it just seems so incredibly unlikely that we are the only instance that life has evolved, in, and that's only in our own galaxy. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I'm, by, by the way, by, by life, I'm not talking about aliens, uh, like grey skin aliens or things like that or the, the green skin things. Um, 
I'm talking about microbial life. Just one single cellular thing that you'd need a microscope to see that's alive. That thing. And then if you don't and then if you've got the planets, and then th those would have moons as well that could have those. So that then multiplies the li the likelihood again. Yeah? And that's only in one galaxy. And then in, if you imagine the trillions and trillions of galaxies that are within our observable universe, which isn't even everything that's out there, just galaxies that are within the sphere that light has taken to reach you, that has taken 14 billion years to reach us. So then you take that and multiply it by that number. And, you're, and then I just can't believe that in those odds, that those incredible odds of this one thing that is supposedly happened on Earth by chance has never happened anywhere else in the entire universe in any of time, in any, in, along the entire history of the universe, it never happened, it's only happened once. To me, those are, odds are just so unfathomably slim that, yes, I do believe extraterrestrial life exists. Uh, right. Um, <clears throat> I missed quite a few mes messages. Uh, yeah, the universe is massive. Tom Scott recently did a video where he drove to show the difference between a million and a billion. Video takes about three hours. Mind equals kaboom equals blown. <laughs> yes, I know. You could say the universe is infinite. You could. You could. Therefore, the chance of life is infinite. Yes. But if you're talking about infinity, then by the same token, the chance of no life would also be infinite. Uh, <laughs> because the, uh, with, if you talk about infinity, then everything scales up, even the smaller things. So you've got a larger infinity. For example, if you have an infinity of ones and an infinity of twos, then the infinity of twos is going to be twice as large as the infinity of ones, even though they both are both infinite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it still counts as life. And it has been confirmed that other life exists outside the Earth. Uh, you mean those gas emissions on, I think, Europa? I've heard about those as well. Um, I think that those are... Uh, uh, they found bacteria on Mars and some asteroids. Yeah, I think that they found gas emissions that science can only explain to have been created by bacteria, by life. So organic um, gas in... Basically, they found farts. <laughs> yeah, gas that is emitted and created through the process of digestion, which would indicate bacteria living in those uh, environments. Um, I think that's what you probably mean, but uh, yeah, but that's only our current understanding of how natural processes create these different elements. Um, but yeah, I'm hopeful as well. Um, the question is whether intelligent life like humans exist. Uh, yes, I had forgotten about that. So we've already answered the question, does life exist on other planets? We've set him off again. <laughs> yes. As I said, I know Sharada is IRL, and he does this a lot. <laughs> yes, I do, that's true. Infinite and infinite makes <clears throat> it 50-50 then. N not necessarily, because one set of infinity is larger than the other. So if you scale everything the same, then the likelihood actually doesn't change. Unless you're talking about one thing becoming much more likely with space, because you get more chances. Yes, you get more chances to fail. It's a complicated thing. I mean, you could think about hours on that subject. Uh, the gas emissions on Europa are... Uh, um, are literally ice and water. That whole moon is water. Io is heavy in geothermal activity. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's true. Right, so actually, what am I doing? Um, need to focus, I need to get one thing <clears throat> that I want to do so I can actually talk while doing this. Uh, well, I guess probably make some little areas for these two buildings. Right, so that's what I'll do then.
Oh, well, now. Maybe I won't even need to put fences in those areas. Maybe these are owned by the mine as well. Also, uh, did you know that the moon Io is actually named after a person in Greek mythology? Uh, one of the... Because the thing is about Greek mythology, I don't... I haven't actually read that much about it, but I've... Um, did I have done uh, some research on it, and <clears throat> from what I know, uh, Zeus specifically tends to uh, <laughs> um, what's the best way of putting this? Tends to abduct humans quite a lot, well, human women to be specific, and then. Uh, they often become pregnant later on with uh, without them having consented, which is how a lot of the demigods are born in the Greek mythos. And in one of these cases, one of these women, uh, he was, Zeus was actually uh, caught by, I think it was Athena, not sure. So then he transformed the woman into a cow so that it wouldn't um, so that basically <laughs> he could try to get out of uh, being caught in this embarrassing situation and that woman was named wo woman was named Io uh, and then she traveled the, wor the world for a long time being chased by the Furies uh, but although in the end I, I think she did get turned back to being human uh, and I think she actually became queen of an island I'm not sure though um, but yeah that's where the moon Io gets its name from. Uh, yes. Um, at the risk of setting him off again, do you believe in cryptozoological animals? Uh, well, first of all, I want to quickly touch on the question which you asked before. Do I think life like us exists? Well, there are really two arguments to be made. One is that an environment that would produce anything even remotely like us uh, <clears throat> uh, would probably have the same um, uh, evolutionary factors. Because the reason why we are like we are is because we were prey animals. Um, so we learned to walk on two legs uh, so that we have um, better vantage points so we can more easily see danger. We have larger heads so that we can um, so that we can try to outsmart our pre the predators and survive that way since we're not really that strong enough to take on a, liar, a lion or a group of hyenas in the African savanna. And that's why we all evolved the way we are. And if by intelligent life you mean life like us then that life would probably also have been forced by evolution to become more intelligent. So they would probably also have been prey items, uh, prey animals. And then if you've got prey animals that have become really intelligent, then that means that the more intelligent they get, the more useful information is for them. Because if you look at things like gazelle or deer, then they mainly rely on their reflexes. So if they're being very vigilant, and if something, uh, if, a pr if a predator comes, run, try to get away from it. Uh, that doesn't require that much, um, that much intelligence. Uh, it's, ba it's a reaction. So if you've got an intelligent life form, that means that intelligence was the best option for, to, for survival. So then, uh, that would indicate that fast reactions and escaping prey or fighting back wasn't that viable as an evolutionary step, which means that it is actually not that unlikely that alien beings, <coughs> which are even remotely like us, who are intelligent, would also look similar to us. But by the same token, uh, evolution could have taken a drastically different approach and if life is very very rare then it could be that intelligent life maybe didn't evolve or maybe that um, anything else happened basically um, 
But that's answering your previous question. Yes, in the words of Mythos, uh, a CD collection narrated by Stephen Fry, Zeus uh, sex crazed glands fell upon another appetizing immortal. Yes, that's probably a very accurate way of putting it. We got a few more viewers, just to let you know. Haven't said anything though. Oh right, uh, hello m more viewers, uh, if you're watching this live or archived, probably live if Mr. W mentions you. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, basically what I have to say about, uh, well actually no, that's only one half of it, well, three quarters more like. Um, because the other point of view about life like us is the Fermi paradox, which is, which indicates that given how many planets are estimated to be uh, in the so-called habitable zone, the Goldilocks zone, where life like ours can evolve, and given how old the universe is, the Fermi paradox states that if intelligent life were out there, they would have contacted us already, and takes the fact that we, well, takes the assumption that we haven't been contacted yet as evidence that there is no other intelligent life in the universe. But then you get the thing that uh, our radio transmissions are only traveling at the speed of light and given the distances, <clears throat> our emissions, because we've only been transmitting for a few years, um, and by few years, I mean that in a uh, galactic, uh, from a galactic point of view. The thing, well, actually, I'm going to search for timber. Thing is, that our transmissions might not have had time to reach anybody else, and then a transmission from anybody else to get back to us. And we've only been listening for transmissions for an even shorter amount of time. So maybe we have been contacted, or maybe nobody's had a chance to contact us yet. Or maybe they saw our transmissions and thought that that's not anything <laughs> they want to have anything to do with in the slightest and were actively being ignored by the galactic community. That's also an option. But yeah, that is, that is the other side of that coin. Uh, so, Mythos is great. If you're into Greek myths, check it out. Uh, might do that. Uh, but maybe, A, they haven't found us, or B, they simply don't care. Yes, exactly. Now to get on to your other question, which is cryptozoological animals. Um, I think they're really interesting. <clears throat> because, well, I think they're in... Okay. So I think that there are... Well, from what I know, I figure that there are probably two main... Um, groups of cryptids, in a way. The first are creatures that could feasibly exist, that wouldn't be that surprising, to me at least, if they did exist, like um, uh, an undiscovered species of ape, maybe. So something like Bigfoot or Yeti or things like that. Because an animal that's that intelligent, that's been around humans, knows to avoid humans. And if it is an animal like us, with a brain the size of ours, then if it's suited to surviving in the wilderness, then I could see that an animal like that could hide from humanity, especially if there are only a few of them. I and mean, if you look at the North American forests and how huge they are, it isn't that unrealistic, I think. Um, and then the other group are kind of creatures that are a bit more unrealistic, like for, exa for example, Mothman, or like something, something like that. <clears throat> because, uh, and those I generally don't find that interesting, because to me the, the excitement of cryptids comes from the fact that they could actually exist, that it's maybe not just something that's been thought up by someone, like fiction, but they could actually be real. But with things like Mothman, 
it feels like fiction. It doesn't feel like it could actually exist. Um, although those kind of cryptids are really interesting from a more meta point of view. If you think about how those stories came into existence, like what the people who, who first <clears throat> reported seeing these creatures uh, were living in <clears throat> at that time. So was there um, maybe a threat like the Cold War maybe? Or maybe movies were new, so films or uh, so horror films maybe, and so people were on edge. And that's why um, they think that they saw these creatures or things like that, like the, the psychology behind them, I, find, I still find really interesting. But yeah, I think that that's my opinion on cryptids. Uh, one second. Uh, oh, hello, U20C. Um, welcome to the stream. Also, uh, Fekur is back. Welcome back. Uh, yes, how are you? Um, hello, I'm from Brazil and I really like your videos and tutorials about trains. Because it's missing videos... Uh, missing... Or was it? Because it's missing videos as good as yours, which give important tips for those who like trains, like me. Uh, thanks, I'm glad the <laughs> I'm glad that I could help. Um, here in Brazil, trains is not popular. Few like and uh, us the simulator. F oh right. Um, but I remain firm with it. I'm writing through Google Translator because I speak little English. Ah, I see. That will make sense. Um, Actually, are you the same person who left that nice comment on one of my videos? Um, if you are, thanks a lot for that. Uh, such as Bigfoot? Uh, yes, such as Bigfoot. Uh, right. Okay. So what else? I think maybe... <laughs> Actually, I think I've got a... Like a Steam generator here. Uh, right. Dampfgenerator <laughs> might be a bit out of date in from the 60s <laughs> but I think that it might be funny to put in here just as the centerpiece they've got this old steam generator although it is really well modeled actually I think there was a, a, another one of these I should quickly look this up uh, let's see oh and by the way uh, U20C uh, these streams will be archived, you didn't know, on YouTube. So it's just Charadise, the same thing if you want to check out some of the others also. Uh, trust me, you're in for one hell of a show. You have no idea what you've got yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. <clears throat> so what is it? WS Dump. Uh, oh right, this other one, because it's not got generator in it. So if I put in... Dampf. All right, we've got some other ones as well. Oh, what, are, what are these? Uh, oh, right, those, I, I see, those are... Oh, that's a static one. Uh, Dampflokschuppen, nope. There's also this one, which also looks nice. But I like this the other one for, that we placed first better. And I will place some people around here as well, but I'll do that when I make the sessions, because I don't, I want them to be different each session, so that it's not that static. <coughs> One second, just a bit of water. <coughs> Much better. Right. Now, what to put in over here? I mean, we could just leave it like that. Or maybe some pallets. Um... Maybe some barrels on a pallet, actually. Why not? Nope, not that one. Mm, maybe one of these over here as well. Or maybe a couple, a couple of these. Also some barrels, obviously. Uh, not on pallets, this time. Maybe some of these. Should need to remove this text.
just maybe up front here just so that it's easier to spot some of this detail when you're driving past maybe some old palettes over here as well <coughs> lol <laughs> yes right uh, okay so I think that the majority of this area is finished though I do I did want to put in one more little area for this warehouse here and then after I've put that in I'll, what I'll probably do is put in some of the forest around here and actually what, before I forget I do want to put in a road that goes along these um, these these sidings here so it's accessible by road as well something like this hmm maybe actually not making this straight might look better <coughs> just so that it looks a bit more uh, organic yeah, something like that and then I'll just quickly paint the gravel underneath that actually is this the scaler that, that I was using I don't think it was is it hmm apparently it is Although, no, I'm, I'm going to reduce that scale a bit. I think I might have gotten the texture from a place where I had the scale set differently, and that's why I've been using the wrong scale here. Um, but yes, uh, I do want, actually want to use a bit of a smaller scale here. I maybe have just a little gravelly area over here. I know, the irony is not uh missed uh misplaced on me misplaced on me misplaced uh, mi uh what's the word the irony is not wasted on me that's the phrasing <coughs> so what are you working on slovak the narrow gauge route and if so what specifically if you don't mind my uh, i'm actually really interested in what you're up to and also you, Mr. W, and you, 20C, if you're doing anything in the, while listening to this in the background. Which, by the way, I'm fine with. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so. Right, that looks good, I think. Might be worth having, like, a little building back there. Just, like, a little shed for, um... Uh, maintenance equipment things like that uh, just something sort of around here like that I am pre-planned all right I'm pre-planning the layout a little bit we'll do a station on a small island oh that's very nice no idea how to go further from here from there oh I see well if you send some screenshots uh, to my uh, Discord, I can have a look at them, and then maybe if I uh, think of something, I can give some tips if if you'd like to. Right, <coughs> right, right, right. Uh, just playing a game as usual, and came back from the holidays uh, only yesterday. Oh, that's nice. Uh, right now, I am playing Factorio and expanding the base a little. Oh, I see. Uh, right. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I just need to do this little area here, and then I'll get to placing the trees. Actually, what was that? Track DC submesh. I have no idea what that is. Uh, one second. Hmm. Uh, I'm actually going to undo this a little bit 
because I don't want to accidentally uh, place down an object that doesn't really work because that might corrupt the root. Which, don't worry, I am making backups of as we go, so that if I, we ever do lose anything to corruption or something like that, um, I'll still have a version. Which is something that I would recommend everybody does. Make backups of everything that's important to you. <coughs> right, okay. Uh, right, I need to do the groundwork, as it were. Okay. So kind of like that. And I think that I'll actually use uh, the same kind of fence um, system like from over here, so kind of keep in with the style. Uh, absolutely, I nearly lost all of my personal book work at school once. About 60 uh, work in progress books. It was not fun. Yeah, I can imagine. I too have lost great quantities of work uh, in the past due to not saving, but since then um, I do save my data. Back up my data, I mean. <clears throat> yeah. Although that seems like a lesson that everybody has to learn on their own, doesn't it? Like, you can say, um, back up your stuff as many times as you want. You can not back up your stuff as many times as you want, but you can say that as many times as you want. And most people won't listen. They're like, they just think, oh no, I'm fine, it's okay, I, I, take, I take care of things. And then it's only when uh, they do lose, or almost lose, a lot of their stuff, that's when they see, uh, right, yeah, I, yeah, I see your point now. <clears throat> Sorry. Right, I see your point now. Uh, yeah, they say, it'll never happen to me. Yeah, the same thing about uh, drivers, like people who, who yeah, um, car drivers. Because the thing about cars is uh, that, yes, you can be the most careful driver in the world. You can um, make every follow every every rule, drive extra carefully, but you can't anticipate other people on the road. You can just be driving down the road, somebody else swerves into you. You you can't correct that. That's out of your control. You just feel like you're more in control if you're driving. I had a feeling you'd come onto that. Yes. Um. Yeah. And it's especially because cars are so, well, most cars are just so flimsy. Like they, it, it, they look robust, but it's just a couple millimeters thick. I mean, if you're in something like a truck or a bus, then that is simply because of the fact that it's heavier. It's much more robust. A bus could take a lot more in a crash than <clears throat> most cars. Uh. I know you way too well, dog. <laughs> uh, yes, we, we have known each other for quite a long time, haven't we? Although that's a nice feeling, isn't it? When you know each other that well that you know <laughs> that you can sometimes tell what the other person's going to say before they say it. I think I need a bit of a darker texture under these just to, so that they're not that obvious. Maybe not that one. <laughs> you, no, you say it. Dog. Oh, right. Dog. 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 Right. I know, I do, I have heard it said quite a few times, like in films and things like that, but I don't think I've ever actually said it properly. I find it a bit difficult to say, probably. Um, yay, my iron ore, my... Like my iron ore train got destroyed in a biter attack now. Uh, well, I guess that's what you have to expect if you dance with uh, danger in that way. 
How long have we known each other for? Daug. Ow. So like ow and then G, so Daug. Daug? A Daug probably. Oh well. <clears throat> I think Oh how long has it been? Probably like four and a half years, I think. I think probably four and a half years, like that something like that. I think we've known each other well, yeah, that is. There's probably the. Like, I think we. Yeah, I think we did meet uh, sometime in 2016 for the first time. <laughs> uh, outside the context of Victoria, that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I read that, just so I think, oh, someone's playing a game. Probably, I mean, in this day and age. Yep, you got it, Daug. Uh, Daug. I'm tempted to call the RP groups. D and, D and dogs. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that, I, mean, I think they'd be okay with that. Uh, right, this area still feels, feels a little empty, so you guessed it, time for some more barrels. Or scrap metal. I've just seen there's scrap metal. Uh, barrels it is. Well, I can place this over here in the corner. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but barrels. Or maybe, I mean, there are a lot of other assets here, like cable drums, things like that. So I think some cable drums that would actually fit quite well here. So just like that. <laughs> just a really big one in the middle. Um, geez, four and a half years seems so long, but so short too. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Like, if I think back to how long we've known each other, it feels like such a long time. Oh. Uh, I think trains froze again because I saved after I undid the action <clears throat> and not changed anything. I'll give it a couple minutes, but I might need to force quit it. Uh, because sometimes it freezes. Uh, yeah, then it feels like a long time. Like I, I feel like I've um, like we've known each other for such a long time. But then if I think back to what happened like in 2015, um, like I have this one memory of what just a single memory. It's like. Oh, maybe that happened like six months six months ago. That sort of thing. That's how long that feels. Like if I remember, <clears throat> like if I think about the actual memory, when I first met you, it feels like it's maybe six months ago. Something like that, I'd guess. But if I think about how long we've known each other, it feels like a lot longer than four and a half years. I, so yeah, it is an interesting thing. And yes, it's crashed. <clears throat> I guess lockdown has messed with everybody. Said no, I don't think it's lockdown. I think that it's uh, because I, uh, that's the way that things go. Because one thing, when I think about the time that we've known each other, I think about all of the things that have happened there. I I think about all of our different interactions and <clears throat> and things we've done together, projects, and other things that have happened as well. And all of those things combined feel like a lot more, so it feels like a lot long, much greater distance in time, so to speak, than if I just think about one specific memory. Because I have quite a good memory, so I still remember things in great detail. So it feels like it hasn't been that long from that point of view. <laughs> I think that's what it is more than lockdown. Although, the thing about lockdown messing with people's heads is definitely true as well, just not in this specific way, I think. Right, so, uh, force quit to the rescue. <clears throat> also, water to the rescue. <clears throat> right. It's so refreshing to have just some water. Also, it did it already. Uh, I think it's okay. Absolutely, we've done so much together. Uh, so it seems like we've had more time together. Jeez, this is like a movie scene. <laughs> mm, it is a bit. It is a bit. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Alright. Just waiting for it to scan the assets folder. Because it noticed that I force quit it. Uh, so it's just checking to see if there are any errors. Which there won't be because I, w I didn't change anything when I save it. Mm. <clears throat> Do you find that whenever you leave water, 
such as the sea or maybe a water park, do you really want to drink normal water? Mm. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Never really thought about it. Huh. I don't think so. Um. But then again, I haven't been in the water that much. Uh. Right. Uh. Right. That's built in. That's okay. Um. And I do know that a black border showed up now. I'll fix that. But the thing is, when when I leave the water, I always feel so much heavier, <laughs> and it feels like gravity is pulling me down so much more than usual. But I can see how that might be a thing that you want to drink something, especially if you're out in the sun and you've been in the water for quite a while, or maybe it's just me wanting a drink of and water being the only thing at hand. Oh, I see. You meant water like that. But yeah. I'll email you some holiday pics when I can. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, thanks. That's, um, that'll be really nice. Uh, revert changes. And yeah, this is why I save so often. Just so that um, things won't be missing. And yes, it was the issue where I saved and then didn't change anything. And then tried to save again. Um, but yeah. This still feels a bit empty back here. Maybe some rubbish. Oh right, some derelict. Oh right, that's what I haven't done. I haven't placed derelict newspapers. Uh, right, so filter first. Need to put on the filter first. There we go. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't ask you, Mr. W, what's your um, uh, opinions upon, uh, of crypti about cryptids? Like... Um, yes, what are your thoughts on those? Because I'd actually be really interested to think, uh, to know what you think about those, because um, you like those kind of things, don't you? No, not the newspapers! Oh, the news! Manity! Right, the humanity, right, the news manity! Oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, seems like a bit of an exaggerated comment, does it not? <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, I know that I've probably I'll probably find them in a bit, but I could just go back here and grab them. It's it is only a couple seconds away after all. Because um, yeah, derelict newspaper der placing derelict newspapers around in trains, just like single pages like that, does make things like parking lots and things like that feel a lot more realistic. If it's like uh, a parking lot that's maybe not being cleared up that many times per week or maybe per month. Cryptids? Love them! The best thing I heard about them is that they're n nothing more than undiscovered animals. Um, yeah, but the thing is that quite a few cryptids actually turned out to be undiscovered animals or even extinct animals in the case of the coelocanth, which is a fish. Uh, it's a very popular example for, um, I think, when people want to demonstrate that it is reasonable that cryptids exist. Uh, but yes, um, what kind of comment did you say it was? I said uh, exaggerated comment. Like, no, not the newspapers! Oh, the news manatee! And then those um, two crying smiles and those shouting ones, those crying ones. <laughs> I'm just placing some derelict newspapers, it's not that big of a deal, like <laughs> like that. But I know that that's the joke. That's what I meant. Right. Maybe a few back here as well. Actually, um, that's an interesting thing. I wonder if there's there are actually articles on these that you could read. No, it's, well, it's kind of elf, um, but not really. Right. Um, okay. Okay, well, staying on the subject, the subject of cryptids, what would you say your favorite is? All oh, right. <laughs> Almost like you read my mind. Uh, giant, giant squid comes, um, gi giant squid comes to mind. 
and don't use the argument that <clears throat> no evidence has been found for them. No evidence has been found for the giant squid, but that has been proven. To make your judgment, look for evidence that disproves it rather than proves it. I see, yes. The thing is, that is true in some cases. Um, for example, the giant squid. With with the giant squid, I mean, uh, that's been legend for hundreds of years. I mean, the the Normans, the ancient Normans, had giant squid-like creatures in their mythos, and all those legends about sailors, those things. Yes, and that is the thing. Uh, it's people thought, oh no no, and then you found one. Yes. Uh, so indeed. Um, I think that, uh, but the point to look for evidence that disproves it rather than things that prove it, <coughs> I don't entirely agree with, because um, uh, you that way you can construct a theory in your head which will stand up to everything. You can't disprove it. You've got a loophole for everything. You say, ah, but this, this thing doesn't disprove it because that. And so then it's so easy that you take it as fact, simply because it's impossible to disprove. Um, and that can be a very dangerous thing, especially with the sciences, especially medical science as well. Um, but so if you're dealing with science, which zoology uh, definitely falls under, then I think that trying to prove these... I think... I, I know what you mean with um, things that disprove it. Um, and I, I think that the way I might phrase that is to keep an open mind. That as long as something hasn't been completely disproven, it's a possibility, and you should treat it as such. And I think that that's true. <laughs> Sorry. I think that that's true, and that more things should be handled that way. But as for searching for things that prove it or disprove it, I think that searching for things that prove it is still the better option, in my opinion. Uh, but my favorite cryptid is probably the goat man. I haven't looked at it for a while though. Oh, I see. Interesting. Or wait for the evidence to come rather than look for it. Mm, yeah, could be. Mm. Yes. Also, one thing, another thing is that uh, if you're a scientist, just throw your pride away. Just throw it away. Because if you have a theory, something that you've made, you've put out there something you're proud of, then it's going to be quite difficult for you to accept that something disproves it, that you've been proven wrong. And so things that might actually make sense, that could actually be true, are often deliberately overlooked or not taken seriously simply for the fact that uh, it would mean that you would have to accept that you were wrong. That the thing that you put that much work into, that you're proud of, your theory, is wrong. So that is my um, advice. Although that's probably hard to do. <clears throat> um, absolutely. I mean, for some things it's different. Mermaids, for example. On a genetic level, a human and a fish cannot reproduce. <laughs> yes, unless it's some hybridization where you... Uh, do it in a lab, and then you literally modify the genes, like where you put fish DNA in some genetically modified tomatoes, things like that. But as a more general thing, I think that's true. <laughs> Throw your pride away. Sounds like our drama groups. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. And it's good advice. It's good advice. If you're not worried about your pride, then you, then it's a lot easier to be open to more things. With a drama group, it's things that you might think are silly or that you might be embarrassed about but that are actually not silly or that you sh should be embarrassed about because that's an open space uh, but yeah uh, you missed all oh, right all oh, right I missed that thank you 
if there's anything I've learned from uh, taking psychology, it's very difficult to disprove something. Um, yeah, it is, it is, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, it can also be easy depending on how you structure your theory. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it depends on the subject as well, of course. Uh, dignity has its place, basically. Uh, yeah. And prove. And proof. Teachers scolds us if we say something proves anything. Oh, really? Well, then... I don't think they're a very good teacher, basically. Um, because I have actually taught myself. Um, not in a school, obviously, but... Um, I have taught uh, programming, so computer programming, game design, that sort of thing. I'm actually at a youth cent uh, youth centre, um, and I think that scolding is never never the solution. If someone brings up a point, uh, then I would then I would definitely take that into consideration and treat it as an honest point, even if it's if even if it's uh, even if I think if if I think about it and I immediately realize oh. There is there are these reasons why I don't think that's true. I still take it seriously, take it under consideration because oftentimes I've come to the realization that it's actually quite plausible. Um, because, yeah. Also, always explain why something why why you think that something's not that way or something that's not true or that's not applicable or right. Always explain. Don't 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 say. Um, no, that's wrong. Leave it at that. Explain it. Make it clear your thinking behind the logic behind it, because that's the way people learn through making mistakes. So encourage people to make mistakes. Anyway, um, scold is a strong word. He's a very unusual person. In the traditional English way, he takes the mick out of him. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah, uh, I see. That's okay then. Uh, probably not that bad. Um, Yes, but I think that teaching is definitely very much a two-way thing where um, I think that to really learn something you have to make mistakes because that's how people learn. You try something, it doesn't work. You see why doesn't it work and then you improve yourself. Um, so a system that uh, punishes failure to me doesn't really seem that effective. And then also uh, the whole thing about teachers and the um, pupils being on different levels is also this divide is not really that good because you learn from each other, you learn from peers. So if the teacher instead acts more like a peer to the pupils, like someone who's just very knowledgeable but still on their level, then it's a lot easier to make a connection, I, I, I know from experience. Uh, anyway, I don't really want to get into that and I've just seen <laughs> Uh, the stream is over, sadly. Two hours gone already. Doesn't feel like it. Um, but what did we do? Right. We put down these warehouses. We made some stuff over there. We put. All I think we've did. We've done quite a lot, actually. I think the stream. I mean, we've basically done this whole area there. Um, David Mitchell once said, "The English take the p asterisk as as asterisk. I think it's called double s." out of others because of things they can't help. Hmm. And then and then there is me doing something exactly how I'm supposed to and someone mess up. Oh, I see. Yeah. And somehow mess up. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well. That's how it works in the older years. Hmm. Anyway, the stream's over. Go home. Or if you're not home, do something else. Be productive. Oh well, thanks for the stream. Don't worry, just always remember, you can only try your hardest, and as long as you've done that, you've not, uh, you've not got a damn thing to be ashamed of. Yes? Um, well, depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying, if... <laughs> for example, if you're trying your hardest to do one specific thing, then later on you realize that you were doing it wrong, you had the wrong idea, 
and you were doing the exact opposite of what you were supposed to do and you were, you were doing that trying your hardest to do that then maybe a little um, or or if you're trying really hard to be a bully maybe that as well um, if you're doing your damn your damnedest to be a bully then yes <laughs> Uh, but in most cases, that's true. I'm going to bed for something in the morning. All right. I'm trying to support people here. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, ready screen. There we go. Okay. So, um, uh, thank you everybody for watching this live or archived. Uh, so, Mr. W, Slovak Eagle, U20C, thank you very much for joining. Thumbnail. Oh, right, the thumbnail. Um, uh, I think there's plenty in there to get a thumbnail. And the, the last uh, kind of um, angle isn't that bad for a thumbnail. That's okay. But thanks for reminding me. Uh, all right, see you, Shadows. See you, Slovak. Thumbnail, yes. Oh, well, Brandon managed to crash ship in uh, into a ship. Yeah, <clears throat> seems like a lot of shenanigans are going on on your end there. Bye. Yes, bye. Uh, actually, I'll do a countdown. Three, two, one.